Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now today I'm very excited to bring you a review of the US release of the Commodore 64 Mini. Now some of you are aware that this was previously released in Europe and it didn't exactly get great reviews. There was definitely some latency issues and stuff like that. The good news is the developer has spent this time revamping the firmware so that the latency problems are gone and most importantly, they've opened it up so that you can play thousands of games on it. Let's take a look. We're gonna do a really quick unboxing here, show you what comes inside of it but also talk about some of the challenges because yes, this is a mini game console like so many others, but it's inherently way more difficult to do because, you know, it's emulating a computer. It's trying to shrink all the things you can do down with a main computer into this little mini form factor. So to start off with, we have the unit itself and I have to tell you, it warms my heart to see this in the flesh, in person because as you guys know, I am such a Commodore 64 nerd. I loved it as a kid. It was my main gaming computer and really console for most of the 80s. I played a ton of games on this. And to show you just how small this thing is, there's no better way to demonstrate that than to place it next to a real Commodore 64. Ah, uh, isn't it cute? So let's walk around the unit real quickly here. You have a power in, which is basically a USB cable like so many of these, as well as an HDMI out. On the sides, you have two USB ports, which you end up using all the time, as well as an on and off switch. The first thing people wanna know when they pick it up, is the keyboard real? No, it's not, it's fake. I know, kind of a bummer, but it also makes sense. It's such a small form factor, it really wouldn't be practical. Although I guess in the future, they may build a larger one with a working keyboard, just like the original. Also included in the box is a USB joystick designed to look like a classic Commodore joystick. However, it has a couple different things there that are very important. Notice those four buttons on the bottom, as well as the two in the corners there. This joystick uses those, again, to emulate a PC. You use this a lot when you're playing games. And to round out the box, you also get an HDMI cable, very nice, as well as a quick start guide, which is handy for those of you who may not be familiar with the kind of nuts and bolts of a Commodore system. Let's go ahead and plug it in and turn it on, and here is the main menu. Now, before we get into the games that are included on the system, I did wanna show you something that I thought was pretty cool. If you go into settings, there are a bunch of display options here. I thought this was a pretty nice touch. You can really dial in the look that you are either expecting, whether it's pixel perfect or maybe scan lines, or if you happen to be in a different territory like Europe or North America, well, you can make it look exactly the way that you remember it. I thought that was a really nice touch. Now, since this is a Commodore 64 Mini, it's kind of hilarious that they licensed and included exactly 64 programs in the device. However, I'm gonna be brutally honest with you guys, okay? The reason why it took me so long to do a video on this was not because I wasn't excited for it. It's because, again, I'm gonna be honest with you, is that the vast majority of the games that they include in here, the ones that they were able to license, I just don't think that they are the best of the best. I mean, some of these are good. Some of these are ones that I'm familiar with that I played as a kid but the vast majority of these, I just think they're okay. And that's a real bummer, because I mean, think about it. If Nintendo had released the NES or the Super NES Classic with only one or two of the classic games that you knew when you grew up, wouldn't you be disappointed? That's kind of what this device is like. And that's the reason why it was so important for me to wait for them to release the firmware upgrade where I could put my own games that I remember on this machine. That said, there are a handful of games that are included on this device that I enjoyed as a kid. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few of them. The first game I wanna talk about is Boulder Dash. This is very similar to Dig Dug, although it's a little bit more puzzle based. It's a really fun game. And I did a lot of surfing in California games as a kid. I think this is probably the definitive version of this game. 
Another visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. When people talk about some of the best games made for the Commodore 64, Impossible Mission always comes up. And for good reason. It's a great platforming game. What's cool about it though is that it's randomized every single time you play it. So you never get tired of trying to find the puzzle pieces to stop the madman that's gonna try blowing up the world. It's a really great game. Another great platformer at the time is Jumpman and Jumpman 2. I'm playing the second one here because I think that's the better version of this game. It looks really bad. I get that. <laughs> this is not an attractive game, but it's got it in the gameplay. It's actually very well made. It's funny because I'm terrible at sports in real life and I never really play sports games today. But when I was growing up, I played a lot of summer games too and also winter games. I don't know, it was just a thing. Do. One of the more groundbreaking RPGs on the Commodore 64 was the Temple of Apshai Trilogy. Now notice here that the game requires a keyboard. So in order to play this game, you're gonna to wanna to plug in a USB keyboard into the mini, which it fully supports. And what's cool is that in addition to that, you can also use Commodore Basic, which is again, awesome if you wanted to type in like programs from a old magazine or something. So that's some of the games that I grew up with as a kid that they included on this device. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't any other good games that they include. It's just, those are the ones that I remember. But again, what is really exciting to me is that the developers of this have now released a new firmware to support thousands of games. And to upgrade the firmware, it's super easy. I'll put a link down in the description below. Basically, you get a .bin file from their website, copy it over to a USB stick that you plug into the mini, and then you turn it on, and then you go down to where, into settings, where you can look at the firmware. It detects new firmware, it flashes it, you reboot, and then now you have a new icon down there at the bottom. And then now you can copy pretty much any Commodore 64 tape or disc image from the internet onto this USB stick and it will recognize it. Now it's important to know that these disc images don't know that they're running on this mini device. And so there may be some tricks to get them to work. I'll show you what I did to get some of my favorites working. So let's go ahead and try a game called Guiana Sisters. Now, again, keep in mind that this mini is emulating a computer. And so a lot of these games expect you to hit a key in order to continue. However, what you need to remember are these things. Down on the lower right, there is a button to bring up a menu and you can go into a virtual keyboard. Most of these games are gonna want you to hit either the space bar or the run stop key to start them. Also, a lot of them have high score savers or trainers. And again, so you hit either H or T to select those. And then here is the Guiana Sisters running on the Commodore 64 Mini. Now, obviously this game looks very familiar. That's because it is, it's basically Super Mario Brothers, but we didn't get the official Super Mario Brothers on the system. So we played this and actually it's a pretty good version. Another classic for the Commodore 64 is Maniac Mansion. Oh yes, love this game. And as you can see, you use the joystick to control the cursor and you select what you wanna do down below there. And yeah, it works just fine on this. It looks great. Here is a fighting game that I absolutely used to love back, back in the day as a kid, man. That is Barbarian. And basically, you know, it's kind of like Conan the Barbarian, but you have swords, you're, you're going one-on-one. -on -one. However, the thing that always struck me the most with this is that if you got lucky, you could lop the head off your enemy. It was awesome at the time. Next up, Rick Dangerous. And notice it is by Core Design. Core Design went on to create, of course, the Tomb Raider series, but here they are making a 2D platforming game for the Commodore 64. And I have to say this game is tough as nails. Oh my God, it's so hard, but it is so much fun. It's one of those games where you you have to memorize where all the, uh, the dangers are. And once you do that, you can make it through, but man, it's a classic for a reason. Speaking of classics, here is Defender of the Crown. I thought these graphics were absolutely amazing back in the day. And you know, they still look really good today. I think a lot of people didn't realize that the Commodore 64 could do stuff like this. So this is really fun. It had a bunch of kind of like little mini games. 
as well as a strategy element, and then these beautiful cutscenes in between. It's cool to replay it. Here is the Sierra game that no one remembers, but is actually pretty fun. It's called BC Quest for Tires. Now this is based on a comic strip, but it plays like Moon Patrol. Remember that game from the arcades? Super fun game. Here is an arcade conversion called Commando. Really fun game, great graphics, great gameplay. Again, because it's based on an arcade game, it's hard as hell, but I played it a ton back in the day. Speaking of excellent arcade conversions, here is Buggy Boy running on the Commodore 64. Oh man, this game blew me away as a kid because it's just an excellent version of the off-road racing game. I used to love hitting those logs and just launching into the air, trying to get the extra points, the extra time. It's a classic. Bruce Lee is another game that shows up in a lot of people's top games for the Commodore 64 and for good reason. This is a fantastic platforming slash fighting game where you play as Bruce Lee and you take on a ninja and a green sumo wrestler. I don't know why, but again, this game's super fun. Here's a weird one that again, I remember playing a lot as a kid. It's called Aztec Challenge. And this is kind of, I mean, it's an arcade style game, but it's just a series of mini games. That's kind of how it feels. A little bit tough. Uh, it's definitely not fair at times, but again, very memorable. You guys know me, I love me some hero on the Atari 2600, but thankfully the Commodore 64 got an excellent port of it. It's basically the same game, just with better graphics. Now, the reason why I wanna talk about this here is because I haven't mentioned the save games. So you hit the button on the joystick, it brings up the menu, and then you can save your state at any time. And then when you die, you bring it up again, and you're instantly back. And this works with pretty much any game. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm pretty happy with this, especially at the $80 price point. And I love the fact that they've opened it up so that you can put your own games on it. And speaking of, people forget that the homebrew game market on the Commodore 64 is off the chart. There are literally thousands of homebrew games made all the time, even today. So this is a great system for people to jump in, check out some homebrew games and output them to your HD television. Now, if you want to learn more about this, I'll put links down in the video description below. But I also want to do a huge shout out to the Commodore 64 Mini Facebook group. On there, there are thousands of people who are super passionate about the Commodore and also this Mini. You can get tips and tricks on how to hack it, how best to put the games over and configure them to work with the joystick, and a ton more. So if you're on Facebook, definitely check out that group. Again, I'll put a link down in the video description below. As always, guys, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care. I mentioned briefly that the company that made this is also considering bringing out a slightly larger version with a working keyboard. And that really appeals to me because so many of these games just assume you would have a keyboard with the function keys and all that, especially when you get into some of the more complex RPGs or simulators or strategy games. So. That would just be the perfect solution for bringing these Commodore games into the modern era and outputting to HDMI. I think it'd be amazing.